So in this video, we're going to talk about carbon-13 NMR and kind of go over some really interesting points about carbon-13 NMR. So here I have three of the same molecules that's oriented different. So this is actually oxaline, and the O stands for ortho. Uh, this is met metaxylene, the M stands for meta. And then I have uh, p-xylene which just stands for power. Substituents are in the one for position. Okay, so carbon-13 NMR is a lot more simpler than proton NMR. Proton NMR takes into account the chemical shifts, um, you know, hydrogen is vibrating, so, so that those spectrums are a little bit more involved. What I want you to think of carbon-13 as is how many different carbons are actually in the molecule. And it turns out that symmetry has a huge role in that. And by, sim and by symmetry, you could tell how many carbons are different. Now, if I were about to take these three compounds and run you know, proton NMR through these, I would actually have a difficult time distinguishing which one is which because the splitting patterns are in fact very similar. Right, the splitting patterns are very similar. So using proton NMR uh, to kind of distinguish which product are these is really a uh, not such of a great idea. Carbon thirteen NMR would be better. And so again, I want to re reiterate the point that carbon thirteen NMR only looks at how many carbons are different. So if I want to find out how many signals am I going to see for this molecule? Well, let's see. And, and, and it all depends. The, the, the amount of signals that we're going to see is dependent upon how many different carbons are in the molecule, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw some lines to see if I could make this thing symmetrical, which means that when I draw a line through any of these molecules, I should get two equal halves on either side of the line. So where would the line of symmetry be? Is it vertical or is it horizontal, horizontal or vertical? Well, it's going to be vertical, as you can see, right? I cannot cut it here because now my two CH3s would be on the other end and, and it wouldn't be symmetrical. So now you can see that I have some plane of symmetry. When I cut this molecule in half, I have two equal halves. Well, there's no more plane of symmetry, right? So how many different carbons, how many different carbons will, how many different carbons or how many signals will I see for this molecule in particular? Well, let's count. I have one carbon, I have two carbon, I have three carbon, I have four carbon, right? So this actually, I would see four signals. Now remember, because it's symmetrical, these carbons are actually the same as these. So you could kind of see here these carbons are the same as these so uh so it's only four signals i will only see four signals uh signals for these molecule how about this one well where's the plane of symmetry well the plane of symmetry is here all right the plane of symmetry is vertical notice that when i draw my line i get two equal halves right so let's count our carbons that's 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 different well i have one here i have two here i have three here i have four here and i have five here right so therefore i will see five signals right again i cannot these carbons are essentially the same as these because the molecule is symmetrical so on the carbon 13 nmr i would only see five signals all right now, how about this one? Where's the plane of symmetry? Well, I could draw a vertical line through here and you could see that I get two equal halves. But look, I could also draw a horizontal line through this molecule and I still get two equal halves. So how many different carbons are there? Well, let's see. I have one, I have two, and I have three. So therefore, for this one, I would see three signals. All right. And this would actually be way better uh, than proton NMR. So carbon-13, and a big takeaway I want to show you is 
carbon 13 NMR, we're looking at different NMR graphs to kind of come up with your structure. Carbon 13 NMR is very helpful because it tells you how many different carbons are there. And, it, and all it is is drawing symmetrical lines to see if your molecule is symmetrical in common carbons. All right, so what if I'm about to give you this molecule also? And I were to ask you, well, how many signals would you see uh, for this molecule here? Right, how many, and kind of guess and, and kind of pause this video and kind of think of it. How many different signals would I receive, carbon-13 signals would I receive for this molecule? Well, the first thing I would ask myself is where's the plane of symmetry? And it's right down the middle, right? The plane of symmetry is right down the middle. But look, I also have a plane of symmetry vertically, right? Right, so I could cut this molecule two ways. So how many different carbons are there? Well, I have one and I have two, right? Everything else is the same as these. So therefore, I will only see two signals on a carbon-13 NMR, right? Now, what if I were to give you this molecule here and I ask you how many different signals uh, would I see for this molecule here? All right, how many different signals uh, would I see for this molecule here? All right. Another way of saying is how many different carbons are there? Well, if I actually take a look at this molecule, it's not symmetrical at all. There's no plane of symmetry. I cannot cut this molecule into any in any fashion to get two equal halves. So therefore, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So therefore we'll see nine signals for this molecule, right? Another way of saying this is that the, all the carbons are unlike each other. These carbons are very unique. So that's all carbon 13 NMR is, uh, just to kind of put things into perspective.